Hi everyone and thank you for joining us today for this webinar with income on Could Turning 50 Mark the Prime of Your Life? I'm your host for this evening, Arnold Gay. So today we'll be discovering how attitudes towards aging in this modern world are changing along with how lifestyles and preparations for the future are evolving to achieve better physical, mental as well as financial well-being. Plus, we want to share practical tips that you can start putting into practice today as you work towards active and successful aging in your prime years. Some house rules before we start this evening. Well, they're not really house rules, but they're more like tips. You can see a chat and Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to share your thoughts or perhaps you're experiencing a technical issue that requires help. Feel free to send it to the chat window. We'll also be fielding some of your questions throughout our webinar. So feel free to type in any burning questions into the Q&A function at any point during this session. You can also take part in the polls. We'll be running by simply clicking your preferred option when it flashes on your screen. So today we have with us speakers who are passionate about successful aging and will share with us their perspectives on how we can live our prime years with excitement and zest. Let me introduce our panel this evening and welcome them as they are virtually on Zoom as well. Professor Pauline Tay Strawn is SMU Dean of Students and Professor of Sociology. She's also Director of the Center for Research on Successful Aging. Eleanor Yap is founder and editor, Ageless Online, an e-magazine where you can read inspiring stories on how others are living healthier and happier today as they age in this modern world. And there's Wendy Sung, executive financial consultant at Income. Okay, so before we start this discussion, I want to start off with a poll. It's a very simple one. We just want to know which age band you fall under. Is it 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 65 or above 65? Rest assured, this will be anonymous. What we want to do is tailor the responses and discussions as best we can to make sure that everyone uh, who is joining us for the session today will be uh, addressed. And of course, we also will take your questions as well anytime throughout this session. We are waiting uh, for some sort of a summary you know, of who, who has uh, joined us uh, for this particular session. Um, we still don't have that number, but we'll get that to you as soon as we can. Okay, here we go. Uh, these are the numbers. The majority of people who have joined us today are in the 50 to 59 age band, so that's perfect. A good number from the 60 to 65 and 40 to 49 as well. Uh, rest assured, if you are part of the older age group, above 65 or 30 to 39, uh, we will be making sure that we try and address some of those issues as well. Okay, so here's what we know. Singapore has one of the world's highest average life expectancy at 83.9 years. That's uh, you know, astounding number. Not only are Singaporeans living longer, their attitudes towards aging are also shifting. So we all know this common phrase, life begins at 40, but with people living longer today and with a more positive mindset, can the 50s be the new 40s? Professor Strawn, from an academic point of view and also based on the research that you've done on successful aging, you know, share your thoughts with, with us about this. Has this perception of aging evolved over the years and, and how similar or maybe how different is everyone's approach to aging? Thank you, Arnold, and welcome everyone. I can't see you, but you can see me. Look, Arnold, when I was in my 40s, I told my students, 40 is the new norm, <laughs> all right? <laughs> now that I'm in my 50s, people, 50s is the new norm. And when I cross over to the 60s, 60s will be the new norm. I think that uh, overall, uh, globally, right, every country, every continent is aging, um, partly due to, you know, advancement in public health and health care. And I think that, you know, if, if this is a good time to, to be in our age group because we are in the norm, right? And most important, I think that there is now a realization that as we receive, learn to receive an aging population, it means that we, we need to step up and do a lot more 
for Singaporeans who are emerging from their 40s and their 50s and their 60s -hmm. and their 70s. So it's important that we all remember we have agency. So it is up to each and every one of us to define what is the prime. Right, of our lives and where the norm is, where where you know where 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 we can be of significance, right? Um, so I hope I answered your question, uh, Anna, because it's a social construct, right, where mm. we each have a part to play right, in. Right. I I notice a lot of uh, vigorous head shaking, uh, not shaking but nodding, and a lot of smiles coming from Wendy, as well of as well as Eleanor. So I'd like to get the thoughts, you know, of of both of you ladies as well. Maybe Eleanor, we can start with you. Has, has this perception about aging, you 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 know, based on your observations, evolved as well? Uh, yes, I believe it's evolved. I think today with uh, with modern technology and there's so many options out there now today, um, we have a chance to do what we can. Um, and, and, and also with the very fact that we're living longer. So I think that's really amazing. We've got the extra time mm. to really enjoy life. It's yep. not just about work. So there's so much more we can do. Wendy, um, let's ask you for your thoughts as well. You've, you've, you're a consultant, financial consultant, obviously, at Income. Uh, there was a time, I remember, when people would approach 50s with a sense of dread. Is it different today? Yes, it is very much different today. In fact, when you talk to people who are actually in their 50s, uh, we are actually saying that we are living into our fabulous 50. We welcome it with a new norm, like, you know, age is just a number. Fabulous 50 means we could still have a body age of 30s. So I always say in our 50s, we are living into our 30s. When you're in our 60s, we are living into our 40s. Okay, thank you very much for setting the tone, ladies. And indeed, based on on research commissioned by Income and conducted by Nielsen IQ in July 2021, so this is quite recent, 75% of Singaporeans aged 40 to 65 consider age as just a number and it doesn't define who they are. 72% feel that going old isn't as bad as what they think, which is why we have you know, seen an increasing trend of people feeling empowered and excited about aging. And to sum it all up, 81% of Singaporeans want to embrace their later years with energy and zest. So that's more than eight in 10 Singaporeans. So let's see how this attitude and energy can make an impact on our lifestyles. We see here in this picture, a group of friends bonding over an early morning swim, keeping active together. You'll note that they are not young, you know, and they may have done this uh, recently, or they may have, they may be lifelong friends enjoying, you know, as, as we are calling it, the prime years of their life. This lady, choosing a hairstyle that expresses a personality and individuality. And of course, you have uh, couples like this, not uncommon sharing, you know, lovely bonding moments, trying out a new activity together. Eleanor, okay, we know you started championing successful aging more than two decades ago when you were just 30 years old via your writing and later on setting up ageless online. So, I mean, when I was 30, I didn't think about anything like that. So through the years working with people in the community, do you see people now embracing life similar to to what we have just seen in in those pictures? Uh, Most definitely. So recently, I just posted, actually today, I just posted a story about an 80-year-old who's fishing. Um, uh, who picked up that hobby and he moved to Pasiris. So I think it's really amazing. People are starting uh, 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 new jobs. They're starting new careers, starting a business. Um, they're going back and helping the community through volunteerism. So I think that's. I think that the joy is there's so many options out there that we can embrace. So people are starting at whatever age just to try new things. And I think it just never stops. Um, I think also one thing that's very interesting because of modern technology and it's a modern society and lots of involvement, we've got mobility aids on even those who are handicapped who may not be able to walk so well or whatever it is. There are so many aids to assist them to really continue to be as independently out in the community as possible. So it's a great time to be living. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Wendy, just a quick question for you here. I mean, uh, it, it, based on, on what you've seen so far, do clients in their 50s or older come to you now and say, look, you know, I want to make sure you know, that I, I'm, I'm covered financially for my retirement, but I also want to make sure I can continue to do all these things 
Maybe it's something a little bit more adventurous, like, I don't know, rock climbing or something a little bit with, with a risk element. Do you, do you get you know, older clients like this asking you to make sure that they're properly covered and insured when they talk to you, you know, on, on a regular basis, whether it's annually or maybe perhaps even more frequently? Uh, yes, actually, when they share with me on their new hobbies that they would like to take up, first thing first is I always say, make sure your protection element has been well covered before you venture into your new hobbies. That's for one. And I think uh, I would actually encourage them. And sometimes, you know, we will spar knowledges, you know, about the new things that they would like to engage in. Mm -hmm. And we could learn from each other. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's great. Prof Strawn, want to uh, understand this from, from a sociologist's point of view as well. Um, did, you know, at one at one time it was about leading, you know, a slow life, you know, quiet life when you retire. Is it different now? Is it more about, you know, finding the excitement, finding the adventures, um, you know, once mm. people have the freedom and the financial means to do so? I think we're at the crux of change, Arnold. Um, I, I do believe that there's so much more potential, right, that the... Um, those who are approaching, you know, their 60s and their 70s, right, that they could strive for. Unfortunately, in Singapore, I think we have been a little bit too preoccupied with employability, right, and financial capability. Are we ready to retire? So there's so much fear, you know, that uh, we are not financially prepared. We are mm. living longer, mm -hmm. but do we have sufficient means to maintain, you know, that level of lifestyle that yep. we aspire towards. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the rah-rah, right? Because I, I do think we need to rah-rah and cheer each other on, right? To remind each other that we are, we are, the, we are the big crowd here, okay? So therefore, <laughs> you know, uh, again, you know, this idea of agency, right? We can drive, right? Um, the aspirations that we share. Uh, nonetheless, a retirement is not a destination that you can just chance upon. Um, yeah, it is a very, very carefully curated journey, mm -hmm. right? Just like any journey that you take, you know, planning for a travel trip or whatever, you have to prepare for it. Yep. You have to be, you know, mentally and financially, you know, uh, prepared mm -hmm. for this phase of your life if you want it to be a golden phase. Okay, makes complete sense. And we will delve more into you know, what you ladies are thinking about this particular issue uh, in a few moments from now. But I want to get back to the research income also finding that one in two Singaporeans aged 40 to 65 believe that their prime years are above 50. So first, let's find out what prime of life means. Now, one of the definitions states that prime is the period of your life when you are most active or successful. In other words, the best stage of your life. So I want to ask you, uh, take another quick poll if we can now about, you know, what people feel you know, when the prime of life starts. Can it start at 50? That's the question. Do you think the prime of life can start at 50? Is it yes? Is it no? Is it maybe? Um, so three options there available to you. Yes, no, maybe. Personally, for me, it's, it's definitely a yes. And I, I personally identify with many of the things that our panelists have brought up this evening. We will collate the results for you very shortly. Um, and after that, we'll talk a little bit more about this term, this particular term, prime of life. Um, we are waiting for the results. We don't have it yet, do we? Yes, we do. And overwhelmingly, again, about 60% of people who are part of this webinar right now believe that the prime of your life can start at 50. A small number, 10%, believe that it's not possible, only 10% and about one third say they're not sure, maybe. So Wendy, tell us about how you feel about this term prime of your life. Do you feel that you are currently in the prime of your life? Yes, very much. I feel that now uh, life has just began for myself. And I think now it's like a lot of times will be on me first. Because in the younger days, uh, I would say that we will focus a lot of time on our school going children, children growing up. And now, you know, with the kids, they are, you know, going into adulthood, mm -hmm. they would have their own life. We are actually slowly moving into that emptiness syndrome, which a lot of my friends, a lot of contemporaries will be feeling it. But in order to fill up this emptiness syndrome, I think we, we will feel the prime of our life to be more complete if we have a well-balanced lifestyle. 
of course the well balanced lifestyle will come into the fact that we will put ourselves into more fitness wellness program that we we eat well, we exercise regularly, and we must always have a good reconnection with our friends, with our family, to make sure that we have that strong support network. And of course, all this comes possible with that financial freedom. Mm, absolutely. Eleanor, I want to get you into this conversation as well. You have basically pursued your own path. The fact that you're a freelancer in some ways says you know, quite a bit about you. Can you, can you tell us you know, about the, the you know, how you're living, the choices you have made and, you know, in terms of pursuing, I suppose, contentment, satisfaction and, and happiness uh, at this particular stage of your life? I think, um, so basically I started freelancing in 2009. Um, I think it's really important to note that I made this choice because I could make this choice. Um, and I did. I didn't want to. I didn't look back. I didn't want to deal with office politics. I didn't want to do all the the uh, nine to five, nine to six, or sometimes mm -hmm. even later. Um, and I felt that maybe it's a good time for me to do this because I had a lot of contacts. It takes a lot of sacrifice. Um, it really money isn't every month sometimes, so it's not an easy uh, decision to make if you want to go into this area. But I'm really happy and and. And very glad about the support I've gotten and, and the context and, and the work that I've gotten so varied. It's allowed me to do the things that I want to do. So I balance my work with my personal life, mm -hmm. um, doing the things that I so enjoy, um, lifelong learning, spending time with family, which Wendy mentioned also. Um, and I think mm -hmm. those are really, really important things. I'm so happy that I can do that and, and I will probably never go back to full time ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Prof Strawn, I wanna, wanna get you in also at this point. I mean, you, you talked about that change in attitude towards you know, what people do as they, they, they hit their 50s and 60s. I wanna ask you about attitudes as well when it comes to, to, to you know, living, I, I suppose, hitting the prime of your life. We hear you know, uh, once in a while stories about age discrimination, ageism but on the whole do you do you sense a change in terms of attitudes you know uh towards aging here in, in singapore in general mm, i think certainly uh, in terms of you know the kind of research uh, attention right that we are drawn to there's a greater appreciation that we have to look at the needs and um, the, the requirements right uh to to promote happy and healthy and successful aging in in our society so, so reverting to your to your question on you know this notion of you know the construct of prime of life and so forth, right? At the end of the day, isn't it just about optimism, right? Whether you look forward to your life with optimism, and it is about you know positioning yourself so that you could live each day to the fullest, so that tomorrow when you wake up, you have no regrets, you know, mm. and you don't have you know you don't go. Oh done, I should have given my child another hug, you know, before, you know, before he, you know, flew off or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So so it is about, you know, that kind of um, you know, a, a perspective towards, you know, uh, living, right? And and that each day is a blessing and you want to be able to do your best so that, you know, tomorrow when you wake up there's no regrets. And then you can look forward, you know, to that the twenty four hour gift that you now have, right? Right. right. Yeah. So, wow, that, that, that's, that's wonderful, ladies. Thank you very much for sharing your stories and sharing your perspectives as well, because it does give us a better idea of what prime actually means and how we can potentially live out our prime years. Through the research by income, we discovered five key aspects that can help us achieve our prime in life. Financial well-being is one, physical and mental health is another. The third is freedom and autonomy. Fourth, personal growth and development. And last but not least, family and social bonds. To, so to, to sum it up, if I can, it essentially means having the financial means, physical and mental capacity and freedom and autonomy to do what you want on your own terms. While we recognize that these five key aspects in our lives are important, it's also crucial to note that planning for your prime years should never stop. It is a continuous journey. Wendy, you have been doing this, you know, for a while now. Please tell us why it's important that this this planning never stops. It starts, I presume, as early as possible, and it and never ends. 
Yes, totally agree. It's because we go through different life stages in our, you know, in our life cycles. So I always say that our planning is like a roadmap. We are like the drivers of the vehicle. We help the clients to maneuver into the different stages of their life. So I always believe that there is always a calibrated planning that we need to help the clients to plan. And I always believe on a five years interval. Five years ago and five years from now will be a totally different transition that we're moving into. So by having this roadmap that we actually create different pots of streams of income for our client, I think that would be the best roadmap that we can craft it out for every individual. Eleanor, uh, I know that you subscribe to what Wendy says in terms of continuous planning, but I also know that you're a big proponent of having safety nets. I mean, explain, you know, why you feel this is important, even though it does mean some sacrifice? Well, I think it's important to have uh, hospitalization insurance. Uh, and so I'm very lucky that uh, when I was working, I had all this. Um, and it's just being, being um, reviewed each time on, um, from then on. I think it's really important not to just rely on your MediShield life. Um, so like a uh, insurance uh, 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 integrated shield plan is really, really important with the rider. So I think you never know when things can go right. Mm -hmm. um, you always think it's all smooth, but things can happen. And uh, I think it's just, you just need to have those. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. So we know now that, you know, planning ahead cannot happen overnight. So how can we plan sufficiently to achieve this prime of life based on the findings and also the learnings? Income has introduced its So Steady initiative, which helps one take a holistic approach towards planning for the later years. So keep in mind these four Ps. The first one is prolong, pursue, prepare, and protect to ensure you're on a steady path towards seizing your prime in life. So let's start off with the first P, prolong. Prolong your quality of life through physical and mental wellness. So being physically and mentally well are key aspects to aging well and living out your prime years to the fullest. According to Incomes Research, 72% of Singaporeans are consciously keeping themselves mentally engaged in preparation for the ideal next phase of life. So we should take a preventative approach by prolonging the quality of our health. So this means keeping ourselves physically and mentally active at every stage. An added bonus for income customers, you can register for Income So Steady program, which is exclusively available to income policyholders age 50 and above. So the program encourages you to track your daily activities in exchange for steady points which can be used to redeem rewards. Plus, you will gain access to exclusive promotions from our lifestyle partners and useful insights from the resource library. So the next TP rather we'll be touching on will be pursuing interests and passions so you can lead a more fulfilling and purposeful life. As we've seen earlier, age is just a number and it doesn't define who we are and it's never too late to pursue any interest or passion. In fact, when you are in this best stage of your life, it's an opportunity for you to try something new or rediscover old passions that gave way to other commitments. Wendy, okay, tell us, you know, how you have put this pursue pillar into practice today. Okay, um, for me personally, fitness, well-balanced lifestyle, it is the number one key thing. Even with this uh, pandemic, even with all the, you know, circuit breakers, heightened alert, uh, exercise is still a number one thing in my daily life. So every day, uh, without fail, rain or shine, I will still have an hour of exercise in my gyms, in whatever activities I want to do. So fitness is one. Two, uh, in terms of the wellness, eating well, eating clean, and I think we are what we eat, so we must have a good dietary habits to keep us going because I believe that not only exercise, diet, it rejuvenates our bodily cells and that's where we can maintain our prime. And I think the third thing is the pursuit of interests and hobbies. I hope to re-go back to relearn my music again <laughs> okay. and to get into piano once again. And of course now, you know, with my daughter wanting to learn guitar, I hope I can pick up guitar together with her 
and that probably can enhance the bonding time. Okay, so that's before electric, she grows up into electric a guitar. Team. I mean, young people yeah, she only wants like to, electric guitars, right? She wants to go electric <laughs> guitar, but the teacher has said that she has to start with acoustic guitar first. Okay, okay, that's yeah, the starting step point. Step time. Eleanor, yeah. you are very you know active in this community as well uh, with with your your online magazine for starters. Do you do you sense, you know that that people in their 50s and beyond are now pursuing new passions and they have new purpose uh, in life as well? Uh, yes, I totally agree. Um, so if I can put it personally, uh, I've actually started doing pottery and then that suddenly went into me making um, polymer clay earrings. Um, so I started doing a home-based business regarding that. So I think the really important thing is there are so many different options. I think it lies back to the individuals. I've heard so many people always say, oh, I'm too old to do this, I'm too old to do that. Mm -hmm. But you see, if you keep having those excuses, you'll never get to try the opportunities that are right. out there. And you'll just never know that those may be your new favorites. Right. <laughs> Prof Strawn, you're looking a bit wistful right now, um, you know, and, and you're, you're obviously very busy still wearing multiple hats, but is this something that, that you think is important at the personal level as well? Are you, are you pursuing new passions and, and interests, you know, that, that, that we've just heard Wendy and, and Eleanor talk about? <laughs> Well, I never thought that I would ever leave NUS, right? Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, then an opportunity came to, to love students at SMU and, and I just, you know, thought that it was an amazing opportunity. So so I think it's important to, you know, to, to, to take advantage of the opportunities that we have and not be afraid to venture forward, right? And, you know, um, and age should never be a barrier, you know, to try new things. But if I if I could go back to your to your question on you know how prepared are we, the one area if I may just um, you know bring up um, is that is the importance of being socially connected, okay. right? Um, we talk a lot about financial preparedness because we're all worried, right, about you know making sure that we have sufficient money. Okay. We are worried for our health because we know that you know mobility uh, is very important. So if you don't have your health, then you can't do you know you can't you can't you know uh, you can't. Well, there's a a, a limit to how much you can, you mm. know, how fast you can move, okay. and how, how right. where you can go. But we seldom, you know, we don't pay enough attention to growing personal relations, mm. right? Um, we we spend so much time working, and and we forget that one day, you know, when you wake up and you are no longer gainfully employed, and you you know you retire, uh, who's going to to say hi to you, right, mm. in the morning if okay. you don't have friends, right, and if you don't, you know invest in family. So I think this is one aspect where when we prepare to retire, right, and we prepare to start a new phase in our life, um, we need to ensure, you know, that you know, we are connected, you know, socially to our families and to our community. So Eleanor brought up a very important aspect of uh, a growing, you know, society, and that is the importance of volunteers mm. and volunteerism. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, something that we should think about, I think. Right. Um this is a good time to bring in a question that we we have here because you you the you ladies have brought up you know very different important points uh, on various issues. There's a question here from someone who doesn't want to be named, uh, but this person is a thirty something, and would like to ask uh, everyone on the panel today what will be crucial, you know. Uh, to work on at this stage of life? What will be crucial to work on at this stage of life? And conversely, if you could turn back time, will any of you do things differently? So maybe we can get Wendy to start uh, first. Wendy? In the 30s? Yep. Single? Married? Uh, doesn't say. No. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think uh, in the 30s, very much at that stage of life, we uh -huh. will actually be, uh, if let's say we are actually building up families, I would think that the time spent with uh, our children is the most precious moment that we would like to build on, uh, going through their different stages of their life. And of course, if let's say from a financial perspective, you know, from a planning perspective, and I think that part of the protection element the wealth protection element on all the aspects of the insurances has to be well taken care okay. of. Okay, so you sound very organized, Wendy. Would you have done anything differently in your life? Mm, 
no, I'm still <laughs> yeah. I'm still in the process of my route map, and I'm still okay. still doing it. That you are planning for myself too. Okay, Eleanor, uh, you you've you've taken a bit of a different path. Uh, you got into this area, if you like, when you were only thirty years old. So your thoughts? I mean. What do you think is important to work on at this particular stage, 30-something? And are you going to be doing anything differently if you had a chance to, Eleanor? So I think it's important to actually look at your connections to your family. Um, and I think that's really, really important. I wish that was one thing I did much earlier. Uh, I'm only now doing it. So I think you need to look at um, whether you can mend some of your connections um, and, and really go back to spending the time with family and friends. They're really so, so important in the end of the mm. day. Um, I can't stress enough about that. Um, and we always say we have no time, but it's really up to us to make that time. Right. So I think you need to come back to looking at what time you can sacrifice, look at your priorities, look at what's important, um, look at your exercising and take up a hobby, you, you know, mm. take up a hobby in the weekend or or something um, just so that you can make you can uh, figure out that there's work and mm -hmm. there's fun <laughs> okay so you, you know i mean not that work is not fun but right. um, i think you need to do that me time okay. don't always let it let work consume you too much right and you do things exactly the same apart from uh, yes i would yeah. um mm -hmm. i wish I, I i had better connections with my family much earlier but i'm glad uh, uh, we're now more connected. Okay. Um, I'm glad on the decisions I've made. Sure. Prof. Strawn, you've, you've, you've outlined you know, the importance of making sure family ties are maintained. Uh, I suppose close friends also are kept close. I mean, is there anything you would do differently? I think I would have, you know, tried to lose some weight, right? When I was <laughs> okay. in my 30s. Because that's one thing that, you know, in hindsight, is a lot easier to lose when you're, you know, you're, you're younger than when you're, when you're in your 40s and 50s, right? So, 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 you know, Miss, Miss, Miss or, or Mr. Anonymous 30, <laughs> remember that metabolism does slow down. So, um, but, yeah. But, but I think that when we are in your 30s, uh, sometimes you, you tend to forget, you know, that, you're only in your 30s, right? So therefore, life goes on forever. You so, think you're invincible, uh, basically. That's right. And, yeah. and, and you're so busy, you know, just, just keeping up every day. And you, you, a lot of times we forget to plan. Mm. Um, planning is supremely important okay. because um, if you don't plan the journey ahead, then you, you tend to lose traction along okay. the way, right? Yep. So things like growing relationships, uh, it's important to plan that. And what the thing that I, I'm, I'm most grateful for that, you know, my husband and I did when we were in our 30s is have our kids, of course, right? Because um, they were, you know, I think for us, you know, the choice of uh, being parents uh, was uh, supremely, I think, the most important choices that we made, right? Okay. Um, the other thing that we did, which at that time, we didn't think it was, you know, doable or important because when you're in your thirties, money is also not not so easy to come by. Right? You're just starting off in your career, so the idea mm -hmm. of, you know, purchasing insurance, okay, is something that we go, oh my goodness, no need, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, we're young. I so identify we, with that totally. Yeah, <laughs> but we did that, right? We did that, and we just force ourselves to be disciplined because we say we have to because we're parents now right okay and now that now that we are older you know i'm so grateful that we did that uh, because then you reap the benefits of having you know uh, some security when you go to bed at night right that that things will be okay you know okay. Um, financially sure yeah. okay prof Strong, no rest for you because there's a question from tony directed uh to you as well tony wants to know given that the history of retirement is less than 100 years due to the industrial revolution are we too fixated on retirement in other words the end of working life shouldn't we be encouraging lifelong learning that's the question from tony yeah tony uh, this is, uh, th thank you very much for your question an excellent one right so i think moving forward this notion of retirement is a social construct right it was created curated you know um bef you know way before we started talking about it and there was a period where people looked forward to their retirement because it was supposed to mark an era where you could rest right and and, and, and reclaim some of your personal time and then as we move forward we became fixated on earning more money because we're so worried that we don't have enough since we're li living longer now so then the you know we are so concerned about just pushing retirement right re re-employment extending re retirement was you know uh, you know i think the primary focus uh, of singapore and many other countries 
But now I think it's important for us to have a whole, more holistic view on what it means, right? As we, you know, gain, you know, um, uh, in, in, in our 60s and, and moving on in our 70s, in our 80s. It is about being socially significant, right? Mm-hmm. You talk to older, so I run, I run a ROSA, right? A Center for, for Successful Aging. And it is about having a place in society, in your community. It is about, you know, just in wanting to stay socially relevant, you know, to the people around you, you know, to the environment that you live in. So my response, Tony, really is, you know, to arrive at a more mature understanding of um, how, what it takes, you know, to receive an aging population. And that would entail options, right? We shouldn't put people, you Mm. know, square packs into round circles, really. We should be confident enough to develop, you know, and uh, curate, you know, a platform where there are different options for 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 different you know subgroups of, of uh, older adults, and then we each can find the pathway you know that meets our needs. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor John. Here's a question for you, Wendy, from Ben. Ben wants to know, with the gig economy and entrepreneurship, is working till 60, 65 still a relevant notion, and and how can people look at retirement? more meaningfully and plan for it? This is Ben asking Wendy. All right, I think I do agree with Prof. Holland that she mentioned that to be socially relevant. And I think that uh, as long as we continuously remain to have a place in the employment sector, be it what kind of work that we are in, we are actually socially connected. And I think the, the aging population will actually feel and agree with this way that they stay relevant. Mm. Now, um, even though when in the 60s, when you are still working, and I think that part of the income that's coming in, it becomes more like a passive income. Okay. You become a minimum lease. You will not think that, you know, I work for the money, but I work because my time is well spent. My time is... uh, more useful Mm -hmm. i feel i feel the functionality but yet the income brings it with me gives me more opportunities to pursue the things that i want to have eleanor um does the word retirement have any meaning for you it doesn't sound as though you believe in it 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 sounds as though you'll just keep going and going and pursuing your interests and helping others do uh, pursue their interests as well but for me i guess i can work as a writer i have the luxury to work at whenever I want to take it or I don't want to take a project so I can, and I can work maybe in Spain or wherever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's, I, I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Um, but I don't see work as work. I see it as more of just keeping busy and also to, to gain some income and just to be mentally productive in that sense of the word. Okay. Um, so, so I really believe, I don't think I'll ever retire actually. <laughs> I, I guess as much, Eleanor. I mean, I, I guess as much. All right, ladies, we want to move on to the next two P's here. And uh, that's prepare for your future to be financially independent for life and protect against unforeseen circumstances and unexpected expenses. With longer life expectancies, it's important to gain financial independence and stability to sustain your desired quality of life through to your later years. Again, through income's research, we you know saw that 78% of Singaporeans are currently saving up as much as they can while they are still working to ensure they age well. At the same time, 6 in 10 of the survey respondents believe that contracting major illnesses could disrupt their plan in achieving their prime of life. So it's important to have sufficient protection coverage as it helps to ensure that your accumulated savings will not be depleted, especially as you're working towards gaining financial freedom in your later years. Prof. Strong, so based on your research on the financial needs of Singaporeans for ageing, how prepared you know, are we um, to, to age successfully and to age you know, with excitement and zest? I think most would be very apprehensive about saying I'm prepared, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know, we, we are always very cautious because, mm-hmm. you know, you, Arnold, you highlighted the importance of, of staying healthy. All it takes is a major illness, right? And that would be a huge setback. Or, you know, if somebody in your family, right, uh, trips, right? And that then that's it. So I think we are all always very cautious, right, about what is adequate. So here is where we need, we need, we need, 
I I I, you know, I, I wish I know Wendy more. I can gather Wendy is some kind of financial <laughs> risk, right? So so as a lay person, I do think that we need the benefit of um, professional advice, right? On what we can afford, how much we need, uh, because this this is supremely important. And I'll share this with with the audience. We we never thought that we could afford to buy our home. Because you know the idea of taking out a mortgage of a huge amount that requires you to pay until you you know stop working at sixty two or sixty five was a very scary thing and and so my husband and I were very very cautious when we were starting out um, uh, uh, with our young family but it took a incidental you know meeting with a banker who came in and, and you know uh, to collect a check and then you know she she just did some simple math and and then she just showed me the calculator and said. You can afford to buy, you know, this home. I think you should go for it. It's a good investment. And so then we go, well, now that she's put it in, in numbers, right, it looks like something that's tenable. And we did it. And, and of course, we are supremely grateful. And this is the same with all the policies that my husband had taken. Now, each time, mm -hmm. it is with sound advice from a trained professional, you know, whom, you know, we trust, you know, who say that, look, this is something that you should do and you can afford to do because it will protect, you know, the health of your family, you know, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So these are the, 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 the very important connects that we need, right? The partnerships that we need as we, you know, strive to claim, you know, this longevity that our country has gifted us with. Um, so Wendy, you know, your crowd are uh, very important. <laughs> so let's very. bring in, so let's bring in the <laughs> professional then, Wendy. So we recognize the importance of building our wealth and also the need to protect ourselves for our prime year. So, so how can we start? How do we start? Is it both at the same time or does one have priority over the other? Um, okay, I think it is, I do agree that we actually need to walk the journey with our clients and help them. So I always tell, you know, friends, do go and go to your trusted advisor and go through your review with your trusted advisor, be it on a yearly, three years or five yearly basis. To me as a start off, at, and I think for preparation, I always you know, like to share the three little pig story. I think all of us can resonate with the three little pig story. What kind of house we want to stay in? Most of us definitely will want to stay in a stable foundation house, you know, with a brick and mortar. So in order to do that, I always bring in this triangle, this total needs triangle analysis. You will see on the left hand side you have the health pillar on the bottom you have the accident disability pillar and on the right you have the savings and protection pillar now i think in life stages if you were to ask is critical illnesses more probable than death i think the 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 odds are very clear coming to critical illnesses and accident which is more probable even with this two years of a uh, pandemic mm -hmm. you know we actually face with lots of claims from home accidents People are more prone to have accidents, you know, working from home. And I think increasingly, this part of the health and the accident uh, pillars, uh, people are more concerned about recently. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, with the protection angle that we, if we have actually covered, including long-term care disability, we would then have the necessary resources to work on the savings element. And I always say, be it the younger you, be it the older you, you are still the same you. So why don't be generous on ourselves and start to rethink, you know, do some planning for yourself. Okay, so the questions are coming in thick and fast now. You struck a chord, ladies. Uh, this one is from Carol. Carol wants to know uh, about this particular issue. She says society is dealing with an aging population that is more educated, that is well-traveled, that is tech-savvy. So their lifestyle needs and expectations are more sophisticated. Where do you see gaps, you know, to better cater to this new aging generation, especially when we reach that new norm post pandemic? This is a question for both Prof. Strawn and Eleanor. So uh, Eleanor, maybe I can get you to start. So I, I think it's okay. So when, when you're educated, you read a lot, you just don't know, you, you tend to go a bit crazy, you tend to get too many things and you're just not really sure and you're listening to everybody. I think, yes, it's great to be educated and you just need to be very careful about where you're getting your sources of information. 
um, uh, be very, very uh, alert on that. Um, and I think you need to look at your research, uh, make sure all that is, is catered. So I think what's amazing is now more than ever, just living in this generation with the different choices, I think that you can just go crazy. You can really, really, there's just so many different options one can have. Um, and, and, and the possibilities are quite incredible. So. Okay, Prof. Strong, I mean, do you see the gaps, you know, to, to, to meet, you know, these evolving and, and, and I suppose changing generation, you know, as they, as they approach retirement and what they want out of retirement and the so-called prime, you know, prime of their life? Well, of course, I and mean, for the longest time, Singapore has been a youth-oriented society, right? I mean, we are always worried about, you know, uh, investing in uh, you know, future capital. Mm. And, and yeah. <laughs> for the longest time, my research, you know, agenda was always how to get people to get married, have children, you know, and so on, right? And then, then, then I got smart and I go, hey, wait a minute, I should be doing aging research again. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> now, so again, it comes back to, and I'm speaking to, to, to the audience out there who, who, who are in that age group, right? Where, you know, uh, you know you're, 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 you're aware that we're going to live for a long, long time. And you are also, you know, keen and eager to make sure that, you know, you, know, you, you can continue to have a significant, you know, place in society and that, you know, your needs are met. So it is about agency. It is about, you know, us taking charge, right? It is about us making sure that we find our voice uh, to inform, you know, that these are our needs. We are right here and we are not, you know, we are not, as you get older, you are not a dependent for crying out loud, right? The age old support ratio is, is an, it should be an archived statistical term. Mm -hmm. Rather, you know, it is about persons who are, who have arrived at certain stations in their life yep. and then telling us, this is what I have and this is what I can do for you. All right. So therefore, let's look for opportunities, you know, where, you know, the, the more experienced uh, segment of our population uh, can engage with community, you know, to, 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 lever, to leverage, you know, on, on our experiences mm. and so forth. And the other thing that is missing, uh, Arnold, is that I think, you know, I don't know why the entrepreneurs are not biting, right, the capitalists. And that is the silver, you know, industry. Yep. <laughs> you know, so I think, you know, uh, at some point, I hope post pandemic, you know, the, you know, the business, the savvy businesses among, you know, uh, in our community will realize that, hey, there is a whole group of people mm -hmm. who are, you know, who have, you know, leisure needs and, and um, we, this is a market that, you know, we should try to, you know, spend more time curating, you know, age specific, you know, kind of programs mm. for, okay. uh, of course, it has to be uh, accessible and affordable. But certainly, um, I think that we, if we want to look forward to that, you know, we need to just speak up very loudly, right? Okay. And say, this is what I want, do it. <laughs> you've given Eleanor some ideas. She's nodding and thinking about her next venture, aren't you? If I can add, <laughs> uh, I think that's really important. I think people think that when you reach a certain age that you can't maybe set up a business, they're worried about the risks. Um, and I think, yes, this is a very interesting thing and people should not just support entrepreneurs. We, we shouldn't always talk about entrepreneurs who are younger. Why don't you talk about entrepreneurs who are older? Mm. Because I think they can absolutely do it. And, and now with people going online to do businesses, it's much more easier than maybe before when you have a, 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 a retail shop. Right. So I think there's so much ease to it and, and you just need to give support, encouragement um, and, and see where things go. All right. Which leads me to, to the next question. I mean, well, for some, it's fairly obvious, but I think I need to ask it anyway. So is this preparation more a personal responsibility or is it or does does the government have to do a little bit or is it a combination of both, Prof. Strong? Well, don't say government. Like, no. I think we need to, <laughs> we need to stop that okay? because unless you want to pay a lot of taxes, right? <laughs> we, we have to learn to be, you know, uh, agitated from the bottom up, right? And, um, you know, I do think that here is where um, we need to organize ourselves. Government provides certain important things, right? But like the architecture, for example, if you're talking about uh, volunteerism, you know, and having a systematic, you know, uh, program for volunteers to step up, then you need that architecture, right, you know, to, to welcome volunteers so that there's uh, community spaces and all that, right, that you could go and say, here, today I'm going to, you know, 
uh, bake, okay, and and everybody can come and and, and and partake, you know, of this because it's a community gift, right? Mm -hmm. Or today, you know, Wendy is going to come and give financial advice, you know, so meet her at three o'clock, and then there is a place and space for all that and so on, right? Right. So I do think that um, moving forward, you know, when we have more and more Singaporeans who are, you know, approaching the ages of uh, sixty-five and above, right? Um, we do need to have a lot more ground up support, right? Where it becomes community self-help, uh, where we look after each other, right? In the neighborhood, you know, where there will be a lot more who are growing older alone because the population trends, right? Already alerted us that, you know, um, either single by choice or circumstance, mm -hmm. this group will, will age and we hope uh, gracefully and right. graciously, right? Um, you know, but they will age alone. So what can community do to partner these important members of our, of, of our, you know, of our neighborhood, right? So it cannot be governments, you know, running, you know, um, support here and there. Mm -hmm. It has to be ground up. It has to be neighbors reaching out to each other. And we have to, you know, we have to, we have to, I think, um, be active stakeholders right? and curate programs that will make our quality of life, you know, something that others will be most jealous of. Right. All right. Okay, Wendy, we haven't forgotten about you because there's a question in from Shannon, you know, directed to you. And Shannon wants to know, is it too late to prepare and lead a prime life when I haven't mindfully looked into planning for it? I lead an active life and have savings and hospitalization insurance. What other protection do I need? Wendy. Okay, you have your basic protection that's been taken care of, which is congratulations. I think that is the basic pillar you would actually have uh, taken care of. And I think it's never too late uh, to start off. In fact, like what uh, Prof has mentioned, it is very much on your individual responsibility. As far as actively we are still working, I think it is time to partake your own uh, set aside savings so that you can actually enjoy that financial freedom in your later years. We always feel that we have to create inheritance for our offspring, but why don't we, you know, switch it in another mode is, why don't we take it as like we are saving for our own inheritance for ourselves, mm. for our next regular payouts, be it as a passive income, to do it like a health, uh, play checks mm -hmm. or paychecks that we can actually take care of our essential and our lifestyle needs. So it is never too late to start. Okay, um, there's another one in from an anonymous uh, participant mm. as well. Uh, I, 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 I believe this will be for you, Wendy. What mm. are the options for those in the sandwich generation? You know, with, with being the sole breadwinner and the family, only sufficient income to sustain you know the fam the family's monthly expenses and if you have an emergency obviously you know that that is going to be a problem so what can someone in this particular situation do to to mitigate against you know these these possibilities wendy i think as a sandwich generation the most important thing is that to identify the possible threats that would actually affect the main breadwinner in a family mm -hmm. because if you're the main generator in a family you need to get that part of it to Sorry, be covered i should add wendy that this this uh, anonymous uh, contributor is in the 30 to 39 age group and uh, has two children does that help okay. Yeah. yes okay. yes that mm -hmm. helps so uh, you can easily see that this uh, young man Okay, he's actually in that situation where he has the older folks to take care, he has a younger generation to take care. So he is the three in the whole garden. If the tree gets uprooted, all the fruits and bearings, you know, will just wilt off. So I guess uh, the most important thing he needs to get now is to take care of the health insurances as well as the protection plans on critical illnesses. It need not be just, you know, a very expensive plan. You can start off even with a term plan that can take care of all these aspects. At least it gives the peace of mind for the family. And it's a baby step. Like I always say, it is a calibrated move. Always do it on a five years planning because as long as you take that first step, you are closer to your goals achievement. Okay, Wendy, um, here's a question, you know, that, that's come in as well how much should i put aside to ensure that i'm financially independent i know it's it's a somewhat broad question but is there is there a right answer you know for someone who's 
making a thousand dollars to someone who's I don't know making twenty thousand dollars a month? Okay, there is no right or wrong. It is again go back to the objective of how much the person wants and when is the target time frame that the person wants to so called retire or receive the passive income. So as a broad guideline, I would always say it's about twenty percent to thirty percent of your earned income that you always set it aside. So it is like, you know, your individual responsibility to do it a step by step approach. If you don't even plan at all, then you know you will never even be able to get to that part of goal that you want to achieve. So okay. we always plan not to fail. Right. I mean, lots of questions for you, Wendy. Sorry, you can't rest yeah. yet because we wants to know: <laughs> Is it still possible to get hospitalization insurance for people who are above fifty? Uh, and you know, will the 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 premiums be so hefty if? especially if someone who has, I suppose, some existing medical conditions? Okay, people who are in their 50s, if you know that in Singapore context, the insurance plans for hospitalization actually increases with the age band. So be it whether you come in in your 30s, you come in your 40s or 50s, our premiums will never be stagnant. Secondly, if it is with an existing pre-health condition, of course, we would have to go through the health underwriting. And if let's say there is, the, there is a health condition that we need to exclude, then that area will not be covered. That is something that the individual would have to reconcile with. Okay, um, we are coming to the end uh, of this webinar, but I just want to quickly ask everyone, out of the four Ps that we've discussed, this evening is there is there you know is it possible to focus on one or two piece only because there are some constraints or, or other reasons wendy i'll start with you and i'll get to the prof and eleanor as well okay i think among the four piece to me i will always uh, rank the priorities i think to be prepared is my number one and of course i must have the necessary protection angles to be covered and then with that, I will then be able to have uh, uh, a healthy mind, healthy body to so-called prolong the kind of lifestyle that I want to pursue. So okay. these are my right. all pieces Prof, in ranking order. Your thoughts? I mean, uh, if you had to choose, you know, two or more or, you know, fewer of the, of the four Ps, what would it be for you? I think that um, to be prepared. Right, it's probably the most important because if you are ready to embrace um, uh, growing old and moving forward, right, in the life cycle, then um, I think you would be able to leverage and maximize your experiences there. Um, it is, you know, it is a difficult uh, situation when one feels that you know earned income is limited and therefore, you know ideals of savings right um it's not it's not, not something that you know works for them as mm. well um so that's a tough one right we can't sugarcoat that um, that's a difficult one and so this is where so so i i am the outsider here right? i don't know you could you know, there's ntuc there that's why i agreed to come because ntuc ah. is so important right so i do think that i hope you know i mean the one reason why i agreed to come to this webinar is because i'm just appealing to insurers right you know to look out for these um, Singaporeans. They may not have a lot of income mm. because they have to make ends meet, but they are important. And, and I think with, with, um, with the kind of, you know, the group insurance that we have and you know, the kind of protection that insurers, um, you know, actuaries, you know, can, 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 can curate, mm -hmm. um, it's very important that we give these Singaporeans options. Right, because when you're in your thirties and forties, you know, it's, it, it, your financial situation hopefully will not be stagnant like that. Right, okay. yeah. um, you go through tough periods. Hopefully, you know, with you know, with, with, with the right, you know, you know, kind of, you know, uh, steps in place, you should see better days. But you need to get started, right? I mean, as Wendy said, you have to get started at some point. So, mm. how do we enable and empower them to get started to look out for themselves? And their families um so so my 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 love plea to ntuc right? i know you can do it so we look forward you know to 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 your announcements and in plans right where we can you know partner singaporeans you know as we learn how to prepare for you know growing older okay Prof. Strong, thank you eleanor i want to hear your thoughts you you seem to be the most 
happy-go-lucky, you know, of uh, the, the panelists present today, you know, which do you think of the four P's are most critical to you? Okay, so certainly protect and prepare is important. Um, I'm a little behind on some parts of it, but I think as, as you, you've just got to start somewhere, even with whatever you've got. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm there yet. Uh, I still have quite a, uh, a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I was, I was there, but it's okay. I'm still uh, doing it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's also very important to take care of your mental health. Um, I don't think we talk enough about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that getting connected with family, friends, and doing hobbies will help also in terms of your mental health, which I think we never talk about, and we should. Okay. Um, on that note, I thank you very much, ladies, for, for taking part in this webinar. Uh, Professor Strawn, Eleanor, and Wendy, it's, it's been a pleasure having you, uh, you know, as part of uh, the panel. And as uh, we've seen and heard today, people perceive aging differently um, presently. It's, it's a sense of excitement and enthusiasm that people have as they look forward to the best part or best time of their life and do things on their own terms. Everyone has different needs, so go forth and plan you know, how to achieve a more holistic well-being, live your prime years to the fullest, and make it so steady. We wish to highlight that the content presented in this webinar is for informational purposes and should not solely be relied upon as financial advice. For customized advice to suit your specific needs, we strongly recommend you consult an income advisor. Thank you very much for your being with us this evening and have a great night. I'm Arnold Gay.